My name is Simon Brown, uh, Trading 101. This evening we're doing a trader's plan. This is a number in a series that we've been doing. You'll find the other videos, justonelap.com slash thinkmarkets. Uh, they're all online there. And today we're really looking, we looked at the beginning of trading. Now today we want to delve into putting together that 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 full picture of, of, of a trader's plan. How do we fit it together? What goes into it? Um, as always, I kick off with this one. You can lose more money than you start with if you're trading uh, CFDs, futures, spot FX, etc. This is real. This is not something that we throw out there glibly. We've got the, the, the last week's video, uh, which was sorry, uh, uh, last month's video, which goes into the details around that. But I want to touch on some of the points that we did touch on in the recent videos in terms of getting started in trading because we that now feeds into where we are now the first is that matrix which tells us the components we need goals discipline money management resources and ultimately a system now we spoke around that uh, in, in this uh, uh, video last month what i want to go this evening is i'm going to i'm going to put together the pieces that fit into these five components and make it uh, work and, and make the, 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 the process, the business of trading more viable, more profitable, more financially rewarding. The money management aspect is going to be uh, for next month. Well, I'll touch on it a bit today, but that is an, a, an entire session on its own because it's so hugely important and so critical. And I know I'm leaving it for last and folks are like, but that's the most important part. Yeah, but there's a ton to do before we get to that. So no stress, we will. Um, and you know, if you're ahead of the curve, that's great. But we'll come, we're looking at position size, stop loss how to manage a stop loss, where to place a stop loss, whether to do a technical one, or whether to do a price action, all of those sort of bits and pieces. And what about taking profits and the like? And of course, we also in that presentation spoke about unconscious uh, competence. We start unconsciously incompetent, we become consciously incompetent, we become consciously competent, which is where most people think we've reached the plateau and that's all that we need to do, and now we're in business, but actually we need to get to that unconscious competence. And then trading becomes boring. Trading becomes second nature. And lots of examples of that. I mean, just breathing, walking, those are two examples. Driving a car is the third. And that's where our trading needs to be. When we're at that consciously competent, we're, we're making money, but then we do some bad trades, some missteps, and we fall back again. We're, we're not, you know, for want of a, a poor phrase, trading in the zone. We need to get to that space. We need to be absolutely confident and, 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 and uh, uh, unconsciously competent in that space of trading. Your video links at the top there, you'll find those there. I'm not going to delve into them uh, right now. Question, are they on YouTube? Yep, all the videos are on YouTube, both the Just One Lap uh, and the Think Markets uh, YouTube channels. Head to YouTube, Google them, you will find those videos there as well. And then the other point we talked about was that perfect trade, which is not predicated on did I make money or not? It's absolutely predicated on is it, am, I, am I trading disciplinedly? And, and to me, the perfect trade is absolutely a cornerstone of any successful trading. Um, and, 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 and it's critically important that we, we, we strive for perfect trades. We don't strive for profit. We, we strive for perfect trades, and what then happens is we will ultimately make a profit. And I'm going to talk this evening as trading as a business. And, and when you're doing a business, I mean, obviously, why do you do a business? To make a profit. But your core focus of the business is going to be delighting clients, happy uh, uh, staff, and all of those bits and pieces. And if you get those right, then you make yourself the profit. And the same in trading. We need to focus on those bits that we can manage. And when we get those right, then we end up ultimately and we will have a, a profit flowing through the system. So trading as a business. I, I, I've talked about this before. Goth McKenzie talks about it uh, in, in, in the last event we did. And I forget who, uh, ah, sorry, and I can't credit them, but someone's you know, referred to the idea of, of as trading as a business. And it absolutely is a business. Um, and, and like any other business, it's got cash flow, money in and money out. It's got processes. It's got record keeping. It's got business hours and all of that. And I'm going to draw through all of these and ask the questions. Some of them you're going to already have thought of. Undoubtedly, some of them you wouldn't yet have thought of. And we need to have all those components solidly in place. The first is income. 
Now, the first part of that income is startup capital. We need some cash. We, we need some startup cash, uh, probably more than you need. Although, if you're trading in an environment with no minimum brokerage, then you can maybe get away with ten or twenty thousand. But if you're trading in environments with minimum brokerage, then really you, you, you're you're going to need six figures to really really make it work. Um, so, startup capital is the first part. You need some trading uh, startup capital. That's the fun, the funding of your business in step one. Then, of course, your profitable trades will flow in and, and they will be uh, income coming in for you. You know, every profitable trade is essentially a sale that you've done. And that's cash coming into, you, into, your, into, your, into your business, into your trading account and generating, you know, growing that, 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 that portfolio and the size of the portfolio. And then, of course, perhaps additional deposits. Now, there's one of two reasons for additional deposits. One is because you're losing money and you can't now do proper risk because your portfolio is now too small. And this is a business that is frankly stumbling. This is a business that is not self-sustaining. And you know, before you put any money into a business that is not self-sustaining or into a trading environment that isn't able to, to, to continue its business, you have to ask some hard questions. And then those questions are why. You know, why hasn't it worked? And very importantly, what are you going to change that will make it different in the future? Because if all you do is you throw cash in and you don't make changes to the business, changes to the trading plan, then why are you not going to make, you know, why are you going to, to, to make money this time as opposed to again losing money? So if you're putting in additional deposits because you run out of cash, then you've got to ask some very hard questions and make some proper changes. Don't just like, oh, I'm out of money. Yeah, boom. Another 10 grand for my credit card, that'll fix it. No, it won't. You'll just lose that 10,000. What are you changing? You, know, you, you started a business, you were selling hot dogs. Hot dogs wasn't going so great. So, well, okay, now maybe pivot. Gourmet hot dogs. Yeah, make a difference. Change something. Another reason for an additional deposit is that you've got a pile of cash, but you put a little bit in. You're testing the waters. It's going well. You're making some money. You're doing some profitable trades. Things are good. Okay, so you stick some more of that free cash in. In other words, you opened a hot dog stand, your hot dogs are selling. So you opened a second hot dog stand. And so if you're putting money in because it's going well, and now you want to you know, up the ante a bit, perfect. If you're putting money in because it's going poorly, what are you changing? What's the difference? That's hugely important. Expenses. There's a long list of expenses. Importantly, your first expense <clears throat> is a question from Lawrence, what's no minimum brokerage? So, so what I mean by that is that some of the brokers will say, we charge, I don't know, 0.1%, but a minimum of 150 Rand. So 0.1 is really, really nice, but you've got to do a certain large trade to effectively get that. Let's use a simple example where I can do the math. 0.1% or, you know, but with a minimum of 100 Rand. So you've got to do a 100K trade to get to that a uh, uh, hundred rand and, and therefore you know your ten thousand rand you don't pay point one you effectively pay hundred bucks and that is effectively and i've got to quickly it's one percent so you're not actually paying that 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 zero point one uh think market for example they charge point two no minimum so you do a 10 rand trade you're going to pay two cents is my math right two cents i think my math is right um whereas if you've got a minimum a 10 rand trade you're going to pay 100 rand in brokerage so that no minimum is is hugely important yeah if, if you've got large amounts of cash then minimums aren't an issue but when you're starting we you probably haven't got large amounts of cash so your first expense is losing trades now, go read Mark Douglas, Trading in the Zone. When we enter a trade, our expectation needs to be that we will do a perfect trade, not that we will make money, because we can't control whether or not we're going to make money. No one has a 100% win ratio. And on this side, profitable trades were income, therefore losing trades are an expense. And we've got to accept that. And there will be losing trades. 30, 40, 50, 60% of your trades will cost you money. And we want to be comfortable with that scenario and say, well, you know what, that, that, that's how it, it pans out. And those losing trades are a cost of business. If your win-loss ratio is 50-50 and your losers cost you 10 rand and your winners make you 20, you're winning. You're making money. However, if your losers cost you 30 and your winners make you 20, that's 50-50. Now you're actually losing money. So you've got to know what those losing trades are, how much they're going to cost you, what is the frequency of them is critically important. The cost of the trade. Mentioned minimum brokerage, any brokerage. I mean, you've got to pay to transact. Anyone who says there's no fees here, I mean, there are fees. If they say no fees, then you just can't see them, and that's frankly scary. 
So what is your cost of the trades? Um, and, and how many do you anticipate to do? If you are a day trader and you're doing 60 trades a day, and now you've got 60 times costs per day times 22 days in a month, it starts to add up. If you're a lazy trader using a weekly chart and you're going to do 20 trades a year, well, those cost to trades are quite small. Services such as subscription, that might be you know, uh, uh, DSTV because you watch uh, 412, it might be magazines, it might be trade ideas, you know, Goth McKenzie or something like that. Those subscriptions are going to cost you money. Uh, data, um, some, some, some platforms charge a data fee, uh, some charge a platform uh, fee, some, you, know, you need an accountant, you've got admin fees. What are all of those expenses that you're going to have? Which of them are ad hoc, losing trades and cost of trades? Now, cost of trades, every transaction incurs. Uh, losing trades, only sometimes, because of course sometimes are an income, profitable trade. The services are very much there. They're going to be your monthly fees. Now, you've got a 10,000 Rand portfolio, but you've got a 1,000 Rand on services. That means you've got to do 10% a month just to stand still. Uh, and and that, that's just not viable. So I've got a lot here, but you know, don't go and get crazy around it and, and, and rush out and sign up for everything. Interrogate, you know, what is the proper value? Does it really, really, really add? Do I really, really need it? Are there other ways? I, I, I mentioned uh, Business Day TV. You can hit their YouTube channel the morning after. You can get it for free. You need DSTV for it. Um, they used to stream it live. They don't anymore. Now, what are those fees? Charging for data, a lot of sort of South African JSC brokers still charge for data. A lot of the global platforms, they simply don't. And, and you know, think markets and others, they're not charging you for data. Now, you know, data can cost you 200,000 Rand a month. If you got that for free, that's a saving. That's an expense you don't have to worry about. What are the tools required? You need a computer, you need some capital spoken about that, you need internet. Uh, You've got those already, and you don't need the fanciest, fastest, uh, smoothest computer in the world. You know, trading is 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 not a, a highly intense process in terms of computing power. You don't need the fastest internet connection. You need a stable internet connection. And my advice, particularly in times of ESCOM load shedding, we don't have it at the moment, but nonetheless, um, you need some sort of backup plan for if, it, if, if power goes down. I run off a laptop, so if the power goes, my laptop continues to run, but my internet does. So what I've got for my, my, my router and the little fiber thing that comes out of the wall, it's got a name and I can't think of it. Um, I, I got little backup batteries for those. So my power goes down, my laptop carries on working and my internet goes uninterrupted and I get about four or six hours of, of, of fiber at the same time. So, you know, it, 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 it means that power outages, as long as they're only a load shed and not a 20 hour outage, aren't a problem. If you're on your mobile, well, you've got mobile data there. Almost certainly, Wi-Fi goes down. You've got the mobile data. You know, you've got obviously mobile's battery. Make sure you've got battery. And again, this becomes if you're doing 20 trades a day in today trading, hugely important. You're a weekly uh, chart type of person. You know, 20 trades a year, less critical. So that's what I mean by what are you doing? How are you doing it? What is that tool that you need behind it? If you're doing that proper day trading, you need backup power for your for your device and for your internet. You need a broker, solid platform, good rates, good spreads, low or zero minimum in the case of think market needs to be reliable. Um, and is an app important to you? Now, I don't think I've ever done a transaction via an app. I mean, I'm old school. I can still remember where you would phone into your broker in the call center if you needed to do a trade and you were away from the computer. But these days, apps are the thing. So you know, if you need an app, uh, then, then you know, how important that is to you. My trading style doesn't require it. But if, you know, if you're going to be doing those shorter term trades, if you're going to be jumping into trades during the day and you might not be in front of a computer, you, I don't know, wherever you may be, then you're going to need uh, that, 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 that app. And then it's a question of how good is it? How functional is it? How reliable is it? How reliable is their service? You know, just ping it, just log on randomly from time to time while you're setting up the process and ask that question. You know, just, is it available? Is it working? These days, there's no reason why it shouldn't be reliable up all the time. The app should be solid. The platform should be reliable. There's no good excuse for these not to be the case. I know. Traffic and all of those sort of things, you know, website, tra no, 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 no. These need to be reliable. They need to work. What are your hours of operation? Now, if you're a hot dog stand at the beach, you're hours of operation or sunlight. If you're, a, you know, if you're a fancy restaurant in a shopping center, 
I know, terribly in adage under lockdown. Um, but if you're, you know, th then then suddenly you, you've got fundamentally different hours. You may be open for lunch, but you're probably working evenings. Um, and don't go crazy. Don't say, oh, I can do 80 hours a week. No, you can't. You've got family, you've got friends, you've got uh, maybe work commitments. You know, I've said before, if you want to be an intraday trader and have a job, you're going to lose your money and your job, you're going to end up with nothing. Now, how many hours do you put into this? And I understand there's two parts of this hours of operation. The first part is actually the learning. And I said it before, engage, talk to your family, talk to your significant others, and say to them, look, I, you know, and block off periods. Thursday evenings, I don't know, something's happening with the rest of the family, I can do between 7 and 10. Uh, you know, Saturdays at this time. You know, when can you practically actually do it? When can you practically block off some time and, 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 and do the uninterrupted uh, learning that you need? And once you've gone through that learning, that setup, that building the trading plan, when are you going to be the trader? Yeah, and more hours does not necessarily equal more profit. Now, my aim for a long time was to get my trading down to under half an hour a week. And I managed to do it. And then I completely pivoted it. And now I trade index futures ahead of the open. So now it's about 20 minutes every morning, Monday to Friday. Um, but what is your trading hours going to be? I've spoken before. I used to trade e-minis out of the U.S. But I was, you know, the U.S. closes at 10.30. It just wasn't viable. So instead, I trade local and I trade the DAX because time zones work. So it's, what time are we going to put in? How many hours do we have? And the idea that you want to be a full-time intraday trader sounds exotic, but truthfully, you just, I mean, it's just another job. What we want is trading to, you know, freedom from ties that bind. We don't want to be spending 10, 12 hours a day in front of a computer trading. We want to be spending maybe an hour you know, checking some charts. You know, when are we going to check those charts? I like to do that when markets are closed because there's no noise coming at me. So, you know, evenings, can you, if you want to do daily trading, daily charts, can you spare half an hour or an hour every evening or every morning, perhaps as the case may be, you know, and, and go through your charts then. If you're doing weekly charts, then you need a couple of hours over the weekend. If you're doing intraday, you, you need 8, 10, 12 hours per day. So what are those hours of operation? And I know when we start, it's the thrill of the market and you watch it for hours and hours and hours on end. But as a, that's just going to cost you a job. It's not going to make you money. We need to be, this whole process is about being more strategic about what we're doing, about using our time smartly, about understanding that, that, that trading is ultimately just a means to an end. This isn't going to be our new job. I mean, it, 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 it's going to be a business and it's going to make us profits and the like. Um, but, you know, we don't want to be spending 40, 60, 80 hours a week in front of a computer trading. That, that, that's not the big process and the purpose yet. Uh, and, and be serious about it. You know, where is your workspace? I remember um, Alvain, Alvain Berger, he used to do some, some FX uh, training for us. Um, you know, one of his key things was, so he was a day trader, but he would wake up in the morning and get dressed. You know, and, I th and then the one day a week, and I think it was Fridays, he would get on a suit and a tie. And he said to him, dude, who sees you? And he's like, well, my wife and my dog and my two kids. But, you know, for him, it was just, you know, don't trade in your pajamas. Don't trade from bed. You can, but don't. This is a business. You need to be serious about the business. You need that, 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 that mindset. So where are you working? Where, where's the space that you're going to work in your home or wherever it might be? Sure, the theory is we can work from coffee shops. The, the practical, I mean, we can, and the, depending on those hours of operation, maybe uh, coffee shops do work for you. But we need to do it properly. We need to have a space. It also helps our head. You know, if you've got a, you know, an ideal world, a dedicated office, or you know, perhaps just a dedicated workspace within, with, with, within your, your, your home environment, then, then, then what you've got is something where you can say, well, okay, cool, you know, this is where I work. And it helps program your brain so that when you're away from it, you're not, being, you're not thinking about the markets. And when you sit down at it, you are. And if you're at home, you can say to your family, look, when I'm in this space in front of my computer, pretend you can't see me. I'm simply not here. So it's a case of, you know, take the whole process seriously. This isn't, you know, it, it isn't just a, 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 a make-up, you know, make-believe type of, of envir environment. Uh, Matthew, if your data feed subscription costs, I don't think I'm an intraday type of guy for that delayed data feed can work still. Yeah, Matthew, that's actually a good point. I mean, you know, I know a lot of people, so, you know, 
dot is expensive. I mean, think markets will give you intraday prices at no questions asked um, and no fee more important, but a lot of the, the, the old traditional brokers, they're charging. And I agree with you. If you're not trading intraday, you know, life prices are nice, but do you need them? No, not really. Not, not really at all. Um, you can absolutely live without them. So I, I agree with you 100% on that point. And then style of trader. How do you want to trade? What is your style of trader? Now, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, 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 commentary around your style of trading needs to reflect the type of person that you are. I, I'm, I'm not convinced by that, but I mean, maybe I'm wrong. And, but what, how do you want to trade? Do you want to trade breakouts? People will say, ah, oh, breakouts don't work. No, breakouts do work. People trade them incorrectly. Do you want to trade chart patterns? Now, head and shoulders runs at about a 60 odd percent success rate, but only if you do a proper head and shoulders and you wait patiently for it to play out, including the, the volumes that is, that is required. And, and far too many people just simply aren't focusing on, on the volumes and, and, and therefore they don't play out and then they're too much of a hurry. Cup and shoulders, uh, triangles, all of those sort of things. Yeah, chart patterns are, are, are great, but you've got to play them properly. And, and, and they work. There's a psychology behind them. Momentum trade trading, that, that, that's my personal favorite. And I'll tell you why. Because you know, markets spend a lot of time going nowhere, but then they start to go somewhere. And that somewhere could be up or down. As a trader, we don't mind. We can make money in both directions. What I like about trends is that when trends start, man, they can be crazy beasts. I mean, look at Cecil more recently. You know, that trend started in the low 20s. And, you know, it slowly gathered speed, um, you know, hit the 50s, hit the 80s. Man, eventually it hit 180. Uh, it's come back a bit now, but the point is it's absolutely gone. It's, it's worked. It's happened. It, that trend is so strong. Momentum is the madness of the crowds. Now, when a crowd gets going, there's no stopping it. And, and you know, The example I always use is Capitec. Now, if you had bought Capitec, at, at listing with a buck or two. And you'd said, you know what, I think I'll sell this share within 20 years for a thousand rand. People would have thought you were crazy. That's exactly what you could have done. Now, so I, I like momentum and there's many ways. I said it before, go Google turtle traders. Don't pay for the stuff. You'll find the free downloads. Now, that's a perfect uh, uh, breakout that then, you know, breakout into a trend. Swing trading, which is fast and furious in a sense. Um, is it important to compare overseas trading with local trading to make profits? Uh, how would 30 minutes a day be okay? I'm going to come back to that question because it's, I thought it was relevant to now. And I don't mind that it's not, but I'll come back to it in a moment. Um, I see some folks are putting questions in the chat. I'm not monitoring chat. I will later. Uh, if you want me to grab it now, put it in q and I'll come back to the chat later. So you need to end, you know, different trading systems, chart patterns are, are, you know, if you're in a daily or weekly, you, you look every day, sometimes there's a lot of work, sometimes there isn't much, there's very much nice processes to chart patterns, um, and that I do like. Uh, Momentum is typically going to be some moving averages, maybe some uh, ADX in a sense. Um, your swing trading is going to be quite uh, fast and furious. Your breakouts? And there's a chap I follow on Twitter, and I mean, he trades breakouts that take literally years to form, and then they break. And what you're doing is you're monitoring, I don't know how many, dozens, maybe hundreds of charts, and then they break. And as they break, you jump into the trades. Up or down, you don't mind. You're agnostic as to, as to where the break is going or which direction it's going. What you care about is that it's breaking, and when it breaks, there's money to be made, so let's make some of that money. And then the part that is truly as boring as heck. The part that is no fun whatsoever, the record keeping. So there's a lot of record keeping. You need to keep a journal of your trades. Um, that's not just your perfect trades, but every single trade you do. And what, what's included in that journal? You know, if you're trading multiple systems, what system were you trading? What was the trigger? What was the entry? Why the exit? Uh, what sort of stop loss did you use, et cetera, et cetera. And these are hugely important. And then, of course, tracking your perfect trades. And I'll give you an example. I used to trade a stochastic system. It was a series, I think, of three stochastics. This goes way back to the early 2000s. Maybe it was even the late 90s. Not important. Um, and I mean, initially it didn't work. I finally refined it and it started to work and it was doing fairly well. And then it started to fall over. And I went back to some of my earlier trades from the journals and I discovered that actually I changed the system. 
I had uh, almost unconsciously, and, and there's a perfectly good reason for it, it's self-sabotage. You know, every single person in this webcast or watching this video has always been told in order to succeed, work hard. And it's a lie. And I know it's a lie because you can work hard and not succeed. And then there's people like Howard Buffett, the son of Warren Buffett, who hasn't had to work a day in his life and got given a billion US dollars and told no more. We all know that crazy at work who hasn't, doesn't work but gets for the promotions and the bonuses. Um, so, yeah, but you start to succeed at trading and you start to make the money and it's almost too easy and your brain gets confused and you, you sabotage yourself. And there's many ways you do it. And one of them is, so at some point, and I could actually, going back to my journal and checking my trades, I could spot the point. At some point, I changed some of the metrics. No memory of doing it. And I took a perfectly viable working system and I broke it. But I was able to check that and discover when it happened and fix and revert. So journals are hugely important. This is a business. You need record keeping. You need to have your trade and expense records for tax purposes, for P&L purposes. You need to know what money went where, why, and how. Critically important. And then, you know, this year you need to, to, to implement a process. And there's lots these days in a digital world which makes this a heck lot easier. You, know, you can grab stuff off the, the, the website and drop it in. You know, the, the record keeping is easier. You can you know, appoint an accountant, but you know, these days even, you can run most of uh, accountant to a bookkeeper. You can run much of this through various different apps and the like, um, and, and that will scrape the data and, and manage it all for you, making it a heck lot easier. But the record keeping is, I mean, when I did some day trading, it was about 20 months of day trading I did. I mean, the record keeping would, would sometimes in the evening be an hour, hour and a half because of the frequency of trades I had done during the course of the day. And then support. You know, a trading buddy, and I, I really, really like this idea of a, of a trading buddy. And I think it was Eagle, uh, Aussie trader on, on Twitter, who first put the idea out for me. Now, a trading buddy is someone who you, you don't trade with, but you and them are both traders, and you're trading buddies for each other. And what does that trading buddy do? Well, they do two key things. They keep you honest. In other words, you've got a system and a process, and that person can, can, can log in and say, hang on, you said you're doing this, but actually you did that. What's the story here? In other words, they can make sure that, 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 that you're absolutely on track and that you're doing what you're saying. You say, I buy when the 30 crosses the 60, and they're like, yeah, but you bought that, and the 30 hadn't crossed the 60. And you're doing the same for them. So you're keeping each other honest. They also your backup in emergency. You know, you end up in hospital or your backup didn't work and your computer dies or something like that. They can exit you out of trades. They can log on and close positions. So they've got your username and password. Now, don't stress. They, they can do trades on your behalf, but they can't get the money out because you've fecked your bank account and the money will only go back to your bank account. So don't worry about them stealing your money. Although, if you're worried about them stealing your money, I think you need to change your trading buddy, to be perfectly honest. There's also someone for when trading gets tough, which it will, you will have drawdowns. That person can be there to, 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 to help you get through those periods because they'll have drawdowns as well at different times. So I think trading buddies are hugely important. They're hard to find, very hard to find because you need someone in your own time zone. You need someone your own sort of trading hours. You need someone who is a trader, who's successful, who's dedicated and committed and disciplined. So they're not easy to find, but I think, they, I think they're a huge addition to it. Uh, you need a, t a teacher, which is books, which is online events such as this one. Face-to-face, -face, yeah, I mean, I don't know when, if ever. I mean, face-to-face -face will come back, but not any time soon. But, but it, it's a continual learning process. And then, in some cases, a mentor. Now, don't all rush out and ask me. I don't do one-on-one -on -one mentoring. I simply just don't have the, the capacity for it. Um, I, all my mentoring is essentially online. Events such as these, one day we'll be back in face-to-face -face and the like, and who knows, one day I might even write a book, but truthfully, there have been so many books, uh, I'm not sure that's necessarily uh, hugely necessary either. But just someone who can, you know, and, and a mentor's almost like a trading buddy. I mean, a, a proper mentor is very, very different. And, and understand... And I get the requests all the time, you know, a, a, a number, you know, I don't know, half a dozen, a dozen every month, um, is that 
for someone to mentor people is a huge commitment of time. Um, and, and people just like, oh, I want to mentor because you, you've got to be able to put that time and effort in too. And it is a lot of time and effort from both parties. You've got to be serious. You've got to put the commitment in. You've got absolutely got to do it. Yeah, and, and go Google what mentoring is actually about and what's expected from both parties. Uh, Lawrence, you're asking if there are example templates available for journaling. Um, there is. I mean, I, I didn't grab some screenshots, but I, 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 I did a quick Google beforehand. Um, and, and certainly there's loads out there. There's Excel spreadsheets that you can download. And, and the beauty of it, back in the day, I used to do it in, on pen and paper. I used to have a notebook. Um, these days, you can do it quite easily with, with a, 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 a spreadsheet. Uh, Google Sheets works really, really good for it. And it's simple stuff like you know, date and time of trade, system being used, position size, uh, entry price, stop loss methodology, stop loss price, um, monitoring the trade, and then ultimately the exit. And then just some comments around the trade. You know, how did it feel? How did it work? You know, was it profitable? But less about that. And then, of course, your, your perfect trade template. Um, someone's asked to go back to that. I will, but later because it's further up. Um, I've, my perfect trade, I put out there, but, and you're welcome to use it. I've got seven points in hindsight. <clears throat> Uh, uh, seven points, probably too many. <clears throat> um, but uh, uh, you know, you can take mine and use it, or you can put together your own. <clears throat> Let me try to clear my throat. Risk. So we do this one. And we'll be back this series in July, a month's time. And I know you're thinking, oh, a month is so far away. You've got a lot of work to do in the next month. Don't worry about it. Risk is hugely important. Your stop loss, where and how. Practice it. You have some homework you can do right up front. So your stop loss is your predetermined level at which you say the trade is not working and you will exit. You decide the stop loss before you just get into the trade. Go sign up a Think Markets account and start drawing lines. Start putting stop losses where you think they would. Just look at charts. Don't matter what they are. Just, you know, at this point, if I'm taking a buy trade, where would I place my stop loss? And just start drawing lines and then come back in a day, in a week, in a month and see how those lines were and see what you need to tweak. Um, and, and, you know, all trading is, is, learning skills and those skills take time. Uh, there's a 10,000 hour theory. We can debate that, but certainly we need to put a lot of time into it. Reading charts, yes, stop losses even more so. Just start, I mean, my advice to you is you should be placing 100 stop losses a week. So you need to give probably two hours of time every single week to go and find 100 different uh, stocks, indices, commodities, currencies, whatever it might be, cryptos, it doesn't matter. Go find 100 of them. Make a watch list. Sit down when you've got two hours of time. Maybe that's your block on Thursday evening or on the weekend, whenever it is, and just draw lines for stop loss. Decide whether you're long or short on each one. Make notes as you're going. Why did you put it here? Why did you put it there? You can annotate the chart or do it in a journal, whatever the case may be, and just place 100 stop losses. Then come back in a week and see what happened to those 100 stop losses. How many were hit? How many were tagged by a fraction of a cent and then went to the moon? How many is the stock run and the stop loss is now way below? Well, cool. Now adjust those stop losses and do the same 100 again. You know, and just a hundred a week, and and you know you do that for a year. By the end of it, you've placed you know over five, you know you've placed five thousand stop losses, and you're starting to get a feel for where. Because the thing with stop losses, you are hiding it. You are saying this is where the market won't go, and if it does, I'm wrong. So the game of hide and seek. And if you think the market is coming down to your point, shaking you out, and then rushing to the off without you, well then you're putting your stop loss in plain sight. I mean, are people trying to shake out stop losses? Other traders? Of course. And if you're falling victim to it, don't blame them, blame yourself. That's where you're positioning it. Position size, how much do you put into a trade? How many trades at once? We spoke about that last week, and I'm going to speak about it next month when we talk more about risk. You know, limits on, on number of open trades across different assets. Now, I've spoken already, you might have multiple different systems. These are all critically important, but how many, how many practically how many systems, or how many trades at a time can we monitor? How many systems can we monitor? But in the immediate, go and start placing stop losses. 
hundred a week. Uh, yeah, and if you think, oh, a hundred, I'm going to do a thousand. Brilliant, but it needs time. I mean, a hundred a week. If you spend a minute and a half on each of them, I mean, you're up to two and a half hours already. Um, so you know, a hundred a week is already a big ask. And then putting it all together. Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a, a big fan of, 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 of the process and I use uh, bubble without the e.us or OneNote or, or something like that. Um, <clears throat> you know, put it all together, but write a business plan. Write a business plan and, and, and present it to yourself or present it to your family or your friends or significant others. Um, find areas that you think you might be weak. Maybe record keeping is an area you're weak at. Frankly, that's for most of us. Okay, so how do we fix that problem? Yeah, you know, do we do an incentivized thing? I uh, I can't have a my my I can't have a brine the weekend until I've done my record keeping. Or if you're a more frequent trader, I can't have a glass of wine in the evening until I've done my record keeping. Um, you know, build those hacks into the process. Uh, work out what your cash requirements are going to be, not just for trading, but all those services that sit around it. What support do you need? Um, and, 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 and go in and, and dig into the areas, interrogate. You know, okay, so you want to be a, you want to trade chart patterns. Cool. Now you need to learn chart patterns. You need a book on it, or maybe there's websites on it. There's a, you know, maybe there's an, an auto process, whatever it is. You know, start digging. And don't be afraid to go down a rabbit hole and reverse. You say, I want to be a swing trader. And you start going down the whole swing trader route, and you start learning, and you find some videos and some books, and, and, you, and you're like, ah, I'm not sure about this, man. I, I I'm not convinced this is for me. Something about it doesn't sit. Maybe it's the time. Maybe it's the fast. Well, back out and move down. Yeah. You, you want to be an end-of-day trader, but the time commitments become tough. Well, then, okay. Then, then weekly. Weekly works as well. So start putting all of this together, and, and don't be afraid to change your idea, to say, nope, I'm going to do this instead. Um, I like I use Bubbleus particularly for trades. This is an example of my lazy trade system, um, and I'm, I'm a particular fan of of, of, of putting this flow sheet together. Why? Because it really, really makes you think. Because every time you come to a point, it's like, so what are the options? What, you know, what can happen at this point? And what is my response to that? And start slow, but start steady. Start putting the time in. That the time you're doing during the learning is not just the books and the videos such as this evening. Um, it's not just, uh, 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 you know, placing 100 stop losses. It's also building that business plan putting it all together, making those decisions, and making it all work. And then the trading system, and I left this last, and everyone's like, where's the trading system? We, we need to... I left it last because your trading system is important, but it's not nearly as important as you think it is. Trading systems really, I mean, they really are important, but, but we need to give, you know, we, we need to understand that there, there's no holy grail. First thing, bat and ball costs 110 rand. That costs 100 rand more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? The ball cost five rand. And those of you who said 10, yeah, that's it. There was a trick there and you fell into it. Thinking fast and slow, go find the book and read the book. It's brilliant. As human beings, our default is to think fast and we are poor at thinking fast because we do shortcuts and the shortcuts cost us. We need to get better at thinking slow. Very slow. I know trading sometimes is a little bit hectic, particularly if you're doing shorter time frames, particularly if you're doing intraday. But we need to build processes in that slow us down, that make us, you know, I, I look, uh, uh, think markets has got one click trading. My view is disable it. Why? Because it's thinking fast. You want to have to look at that whole screen and think about what you're entering. You know, if seconds matter, then sure. But you know, for the average trade, really, seconds aren't going to matter. Trading needs to be slow and thoughtful. It needs to be process-driven. And ultimately, it needs to be unconsciously competent. So go read that book, Thinking Fast and Slow. There's some more homework for you, a book to read, another book to read. There is no holy grail in the trading system. There's no, it's this or nothing else. Will it be informed by your trading style? Are you going to be a, a swing trader? Are you, are you going to use technical, uh, uh, sorry, uh, chart patterns? How are you going to trade? Is it going to be pure mechanical? I'm a big fan of pure mechanical. I think the biggest risk to our trading system is us and the individual. I like the idea 
that we can have a, a pure mechanical system which removes me from the process. I then just build myself a, a process and I follow it step by step by step. But what are you going to trade? He has a critical question. Equities, commodities, indices, FX or crypto? Why? If you said crypto because it's going to the moon, or if you said commodity because there's a good story to gold, stop, back up, and restart the process. Because crypto is going to the moon, but is it? That's a bias, and maybe it isn't. I mean, crypto isn't going to the moon. Truthfully, the NASDAQ's going to the moon, and crypto, and everybody else, and gold, and everyone else is watching the NASDAQ as it makes new all-time highs repeatedly. Crypto is more than 50% off its highs. I mean, don't bring the bias to it. You, you want to trade something, why are you trading it? Why equities? Because you think you've got an edge? I like indices, and I've spoken about that in the previous videos. I like indices because, because it's a conglomerate of a market. I've told you about the chap I know who, who trades uh, Singapore because he knows nothing about it. So I love about the DAX. I can look at those 30 stocks in the DAX. I don't know who they are. I don't know what they are. Half the names I can't pronounce because they're German. And that's exactly what you want to have. That exactly comes back. Uh, Pumani, I'll come to you in a moment. Um, it, it, it really is a case of, of really interrogating the why, understanding the risks. Your least risky is FX, then indices, then commodities, then equity. But don't start with FX because that's where the pros are. So I always say to folks, start in the indices, start in the minis. Leave equity. Single event risk is significant. You were short Aspen and it turns out that they've got some rights to some new wonder COVID drug. The stock's up 10% in the day and you just got taken to the cleaners. Now index today, you were short the index. Now you shouldn't have been short Aspen or the index because they're both in uptrends. But if you were, yeah, Aspen up 10%, index only up three, a lot less pain in the one versus the other. So what you want to trade is hugely important, absolutely critical that you go and crunch the what's and why's. Go look at my, my earlier videos where we talk around why the different asset classes, what are the risks in them. They've also got different trading hours. You know, FX is a 24-7 market. Commodities to a degree as well. Equity, you can pick your market. Maybe you're an insomniac and you want to trade equities in, I don't know, the US because you don't sleep at night. You're only going to go to bed at 4 o'clock in the morning, so not a problem. Don't just like, well, I hear Bitcoin is exciting and the Nasdaq's high, so I'll trade Nasdaq and Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin, 24-7 market. You know, absolutely, and 24-7. And, and not, you know, most equity markets are 8-5, eight, 8 hours a day, 5 days a week. Um, indices, NASDAQ, yes, but is the NASDAQ always going to be rising? No, don't base your decision on what you're going to trade on what's happening today. Base it on, on, on time zones. Base it on volatility. Base it on risk. And then keep it simple. Keep it very simple. Do the bubble chart on it so you get a sense of, of, of that complete flow that you're able to answer every question at every point in the bubble chart. And then go and do 20 eyeball trades. What I mean by eyeball trades is you're going backwards in time. So this is a manual process. Get the data, go back a week, a month, a year, and take it forward candle by candle and say, right, I would have bought there, I would have sold there, I would have bought here, and I would have stopped out there. And then do 20 paper trades in real time. Now, this is taking time. I mean, yeah, but so don't, instead of doing back, uh, uh, back in time, you're now sitting there, you've got your charts there, live, daily, weekly, intraday, whatever the case is, and you're doing 20 paper trades, marching forward. And then do 20 small trades, tiny amount, small, small. And then at the end of this process, you've now got 60 trades that you've done. You've now got a data set that starts to give you a sense of, does this theory, the system that you have, does it work? What are the drawdowns like? What is my win-loss ratio? This comes from Mark Douglas, Trading in the Zone. There's a question about a book that you should read. Go read Trading in the Zone. Read books by Alexander Elder. Read Reminiscence of a Stock Operator. And read books by Van K. Thorpe. Go to justfunlap.com, search books. You'll find a list and a bunch of reviews of those books there. As you test the system, you learn to trust it. As you trust the system, you learn to become disciplined to it. As you become disciplined to a system, you start becoming unconsciously competent. This all fits together.
And when you find a system, stick to it. Don't system hop. Now, you may decide you want to trade two different ways. You may say, I want to be a trend trader, but I also really like head and shoulders and breakouts. So I'm going to do head and shoulders, I'm going to do trends, and I'm going to do breakouts into new trends. That's, you know, so you've got, maybe got a couple of different systems. But don't hop systems. Don't One day you wake up and you trade head and shoulders, and the next day you wake up and you're trading breakouts and stuff. Pick a style. Pick a strategy. Stick to it. Test it. See if it's right for you. Run that process. Do the bubble graph for it the whole way through. You know, head and shoulders. You know, how do the shoulders form? What are the volume requirements? What is the entry? Do you do it on the break of the neckline or do you do it on a retest, break, retest, and then hit the trade? All of this runs through. Where do you place your stop loss? Someone's saying, what about reversal patterns? Absolutely. So reversal patterns are rarities, things like kangaroo tails, island reversals. Um, there's some candlestick uh, patterns that are for reversals. There's a ton of them out there. And then your trading goals. So the first point of those set of folks, trading is not the answer to a life you hate. If you don't like your job, if you don't like your boss, if you don't like your life, trading is not your answer perfectly. You need, there's a lot more to it. But what are your long-term goals for trading? Design processes that result in these goals. If your long-term goal is to you know, buy a Greek island and drink ouzo and eat olives, um, great, but and does it have internet and is, is, is being a 12-hour day trader going to fit in that? Design the process with the end goal in mind, that process that gets you to the goal, and then focus on the processes and refine and follow those processes. And, and the refined part is, is very, very important. They change over time. Um, they, they, they're not completely and absolutely static, but you need to have a fairly good idea of what's the bigger picture and break it down into little pieces. I spoke about it in last month's presentation when I went through that matrix. We can't have one giant goal. You've got to have small little goals that fit together that are processes that ultimately become habits. Hugely important. Bruno, drop me a mail, simon at justonelap.com. I'll send you some videos on price action trading. So in closing and some homework, uh, set aside your time every week, open a demo account and learn the platform. Learning the platform is part of the process. 100 stop losses, set those, start working with the charts. Indicators, oscillators, trend lines, and 100 stop losses. Try different trading systems, start putting things together. Do not pay for a trading system and then start saving for a trading account if you don't have the cash already. A couple of questions, and I come to those. Now, trading is a business. Treat it like one. Expect things to be rocky at times. You had a business, and then pandemic came, and whoa, hang on. I mean, almost any business found it hard in April. Expect that to happen. Have contingencies for it. Have plans. Put in the hours. Plenty of hours, but don't think you can put in 60, 80, 100. Engage your family and make an agreement. These are the hours I'll put in. These are the times of the day I'll do it, or night or weekend or whatever the case is. Don't become a trader, but lose your family in the process. And put in place those processes. Work out what you want. Work backwards to how you get to it. And put those processes that get you to where you want to be. And always be learning. Follow traders on Twitter, but not blowheads, real traders. There's some really, really great traders on Twitter who you can learn from. You're not going to make money from them directly, but you're going to learn from them. And that will be hugely, hugely important. Uh, a question to go back to the bat and ball. Bat and ball costs 110 Rand. Bat costs 100 Rand more than the ball. How much does the ball cost? The ball costs 5 Rand. The bat costs 105 rand. Together, they're 110, and the bat is 100 more than the ball. The easy answer, when you look at that and you're thinking fast, you say, oh, the ball costs 10 rand. No, nope, that, that, those numbers then don't work out. Uh, questions coming in. I'll take some questions, some disclaimers. Uh, remember all the events coming up. They're all available at this point. We can go and grab them. Um, I'm going to take any questions you've got, throw me the questions, and then uh, all the previous ThinkMark videos, justonelap.com slash thinkmarkets, they're on the Think Markets YouTube and the Just One Lap YouTube pages as well. Uh, Think Markets contact details. Uh, is it it's, um, isn't it important to compare overseas trading with local trading to make profits, so how could 30 minutes a day be okay? 
No, I mean, you absolutely don't need to worry about overseas markets. You can, and you can use them as a lead indicator or something. Um, but uh, no, I mean, you can trade in an isolation. Uh, yeah, our price action will tell you what to do, and our price action will in part be informed by offshore markets. Therefore, if you look at our prices, you will see what offshore markets have done because they will be reflected in our prices as well. Uh, Tyler, nice haircut. Yep, a DIY haircut. Good on the sides, less on the top. But man, I'm never going back to a barber. I'm going to be saving. So my haircuts were expensive, but deeply infrequent. Um, now I can make them frequent and they're free. No, I'm not cutting other people. Uh, but always a pleasure. Um, Ashmir, what charts do you recommend we review? Uh, I mean, so my, if I'm understanding you correctly, if I'm not, uh, Ashmir, bring the question back to me. My, my, answer to you is quite simple is, is you know, put together a, a process of probably 60 or 70 stocks, uh, throw in some indicators, uh, sorry, some, some indices, some currencies, some commodities, some cryptos if you want, you, you, you've got a hundred of them. Um, yeah, I, I, the charts in themselves, what are they, what is underlying them I think is less important. But you want to have the different asset classes because they do respond differently, particularly in terms of, of volatility and the like. Uh, Andre, always a pleasure. Uh, Tyler, what percentage stop loss do I use on indices? Um, I don't use percentage stop losses. I, when I'm trading my Aussie, I'm using a 100-point trailing stop. But I'm only looking to scrape 200 points. When I was trading a weekly chart on the Aussie, my stops would sometimes be 1,000 to 2,500 points. Uh, Shane, great question. How many trades can you run in parallel for 300,000 cash portfolio? So you can quite easily gear that. I mean, you could gear to, to millions and millions, don't you? You could gear that to, to you know, 900,000. So let's call it somewhere between 750 and a million for your 300 cash. The, the point being is it's not then how many trades. It's that, you know, whether you did three or 10, you could do three or 10, just the trade sizes would be different. Um, I'm going to delve into that a lot more in the next uh, month's one. But I mean, the, the, the key point with the cash, it's sufficient to run a, port, a portfolio and to run a, a trading portfolio. Uh, what you could potentially do with that is run yourself two or three different systems, and you could potentially have a trade or two in each. But then I would make them daily or weekly, and I would actually err towards the weekly. Otherwise, it starts getting a little bit hairy. Uh, anonymous, always a pleasure. Rodney, always a pleasure. Uh, Shane, think markets the cheapest platform brokerage and trading costs? Um, yeah, uh, and because they have no minimums and therefore no minimums is the best. You want to move ZAR to USD to trade for overseas markets? So short answer is you put it into think markets, they'll convert it for you. If you're not wanting to, if you want to move money out to buy donuts or something in the US or something, uh, I like the shift app. Um, really slick, really simple, works incredibly well. Uh, but go to the Think Markets website, they talk about the process for you. Christo, pleasure. Shelly, absolute pleasure. Uh, Clive, do you know why some markets, sorry, why are markets for some CFDs closed from time to time? Provider who's overexposed? Clive, it, it could be. Uh, it could be particularly in the short side that they can't get any, any stock to be shorting. Um, it might be a risk assessment in terms of volatility or liquidity for the provider. Um, certainly that is one of the, the uh, 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 I don't say risk, let's call it a risk. It's one of the potentials. When you come along to trade a CFD and it's like closed. And there could be a bunch of reasons for it. Certainly yours is one of them. Ty, absolute pleasure. Uh, let me go to the chat because there's some questions coming through. Uh, Chris, best time frame to trade if you have a day job as well? Chris, the short answer is a weekly chart. Because even if you're doing a daily chart, you need to commit a couple of hours in the evening, and that is tough. Um, so my sense is the best time frame is going to be a weekly chart. And I know that's slow. But man, some of my best profits are coming. You, you get into a trend in a weekly chart, man, that thing can just feed your account for months, years on end. I got into a trade on the Indy 25, um, made me 300 odd percent ungeared over, it was like about a four or five year run. And that was on a, on a weekly chart. Uh, Red One Miller from Think Markets says, next, next week's webinar, uh, Kia from Think Markets, basic technical analysis and also auto charters. Uh, auto charters is a brilliant platform. So I was talking there about chart patterns. 
Well, this thing just does it for you. Um, and you can book for that at the Think Markets uh, URL there. You can go book for that. Uh, Claire will be doing an auto charters technical analysis, and auto charters is absolutely brilliant. Dylan, pleasure. Uh, one or two good names on Twitter. Yeah, and as I said that, I knew I should have prepped it. Tell you what, guys, uh, someone remind me. I will go and get a couple of names, and then I'll tweet them out um, over a bunch. I, I should have known that that question was coming. Jacques, a pleasure. Uh, Dylan, am I still trading lazy? No, I'm not trading lazy. I rejigged my entire portfolios at the end of the last year, partly because... I wanted to put more capital into the uh, pre-open Aussie trading I was doing, and I'm increasing my ETF exposure. The lazy system is out there. Personally, I don't trade it. Uh, Jibulin Zabundi is trading it, and I want to chat to him around some plans around that. And I've been saying that probably all of this year, and it's June, but man, it's been a year. Uh, Matthews will start with Robinhood traders. What arrangements can brokers have with other brokers in terms of how traders trade? Any risk to traders at all? I don't know what the Robin Hood story is. Robin Hood traders have been going crazy and buying stuff. Um, that's fine. They're making money. Uh, brokers with other brokers in terms of how traders trade, they shouldn't be. I mean, there should be no um, uh, uh, conflicts or anything between the, the, the brokers. If you think brokers are front-running you or something, find a new one. Um, Simon, the perfect trade doesn't seem to work. You're talking the hashtag. Uh, I will check that. Um, Tyler, I'm just I'm trading price action. Simply price action, pre-market, drop me a mail. I will send you details, some videos. There's my email address. Um, hmm. I will chase that. Actually, now that I think about it, I monitor that and I haven't seen it. Okay. I'm gonna, uh, yeah. I'm going to chase that, see what the problem is there. Uh, maybe just no one's done them. Uh, trading in the zone. Almost finished trading in the zone. Clive, brilliant book. I read it every year. I reread it every holiday. Um, do you believe brokers manipulate markets? Nah, short answer, no. I think traders try. I think investment managers try. Uh, there's no need for brokers to manipulate markets. They make money regardless with them. If a broker is manipulating a market, it's because they've got a very, very dodge business model. It also depends on the market. If you want to manipulate a small little penny stock in South Africa, easy as pie. If you want to manipulate the oil market, you're going to need billions. You manipulate it for five minutes, and then you'll still lose in the end. Uh, does Think Markets run webinars to use their platform and trading courses? Shane, they do. And we have one next week, and you can book for them at that link right there, or drop them an email, support at thinkmarkets.com, drop them a phone call. They've got a whole bunch there. Uh, Shane, absolute pleasure. Uh, yeah, look, I, to, 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 there are some very red ones saying unregistered brokers. There are some dodgy brokers out there. Um, I don't consider them brokers. I consider those peeps just crooks, I mean, to be perfectly honest. Uh, Kefla, thanks, Simon. Only opened a demo account last week, hoping to take this journey with you, learning how to trade. Absolute pleasure. Paul, uh, views on Sasso, do you think it will settle at 150? I think it's waiting for a key piece of information, and that is the Lake Charles project. How much are they selling? How much will they get for? Reports are about 30 billion. That's a good amount of money. But how much do they have to give away for that 30 billion? That's going to decide uh, what happens next. Um, boom, boom. Thank you, Ernest. Absolute pleasure. Uh, does this one app have a share buying platform? No, we don't. We are just information and education. We, uh, you want brokers such as Think Markets for that. Aspen, Paul Daniels, uh, 150 bucks. They're going to earn 13 Rand 50. At about 130 a month or so ago, I thought they were fairly valued, and they're probably still cheap. And that's not because they have rights to this drug that no one can pronounce. I think, they, I think they're fairly valued at that point. Um, heard not a spelling right. Should I, I, so now I've got to go check, and I can't do it because I've got to go to my system. Uh, tweet me. Let's sort this out. Let's get it going. Uh, nope, we don't. That one there. Uh, Regan, always pleasure. Aspen thought. Ladies and gents, we are about to hit our absolute time limit. We will park it there. We'll be back next week. Um, if you don't know where to register, contact Think Markets or the link is. Ah, I want to go there. Follow the Think Market link there. You can go and register. Uh, Craig, what size leverage do you suggest? Overall portfolio, three times. We talked about that in last week's uh, uh, session. You can find those at justonelab.com slash thinkmarkets. 
Cool, ladies and gents, we'll park it there. Everyone have a great evening further. Stay safe, wash your hands. And if you live in Joburg, careful. It is cold out there. My advice is don't leave home unless you have to. Cheers all.